calculate the axial force s i in each bar of the simple truss supported and loaded as shown in figure the triangle acb is isosceles with 30 degrees angles at a and b and p is equal to 5 kN here in this problem you have to calculate all the axial forces in the members for calculation of all the axial forces in the members method of joints is preferable in this session let's see how to calculate all the axial forces in the members by method of joints here this is the given figure so if you observe the given figure a is supported by means of hinge so when there is a hinge there is restriction in both x and y directions so there will be reaction in both the directions here along y direction there will be one reaction along x direction there will be one reaction let the reaction along y will be y b r a y and the reaction along x consists as r a x and if you observe in the given figure b is supported by means of roller support so there you have to draw a vertical reaction at b and you have to observe whether the lettering is given to the joints and numbers are given to the members so this is the first thing you have to observe if it is not given you have to give the numbering so numbering is given in the question itself no need to worry here uh, all the data won't be given in the figure sometimes the data will be mentioned in the question itself here if you observe the question it is mentioned that the triangle acb is isosceles with 30 degrees angles at a and b so that means this angle is 30 degrees at a and at b this angle is 30 degrees this is 30 this is 60 so then the remaining angle here will be 90 degrees as sum of angles in a triangle is uh, 180 so the remaining angle in this triangle will be 90 degrees here this is 60 the angle in a straight line is 180 right so then this one will be 120 degrees now this angle is 120 plus 30 150 180 minus 150 so it is 30 degrees now all the angles we have calculated now you have to select a joint and you have to use only two equations in method of uh, joints which are nothing but sigma fx is equal to 0 sigma fy equal to 0 so which joint you have to start with that is the first problem here when you consider joint a rax ray are the two unknowns when you consider joint a, equilibrium of joint a there will be tensile force along member 1 and there will be tensile force along member 4 so two unknowns plus two unknowns total four unknowns here when you consider equilibrium of joint c 1 2 3 3 unknowns are there when you consider equilibrium of joint d one unknown second unknown third unknown and when you consider equilibrium of joint b 1 2 three unknowns are there so what are maybe the joint you consider so it is it is having at least uh, three unknowns first you have to check whether there are two unknowns or not if there are two unknowns then you can start with that joint so if you are not having two unknowns there then start with joint which is having three unknowns when you are going to select the joint which is having three unknowns you have to observe there is there external load or not you have to observe there if there is external load so then you should be able to find at least a single axial force suppose if you consider this problem when i consider equilibrium of this joint so here uh, there is external force p is equal to 5 kN is the external force this joint is subjected to external force so when i consider equilibrium of this joint i should be able to find a single force so likewise i have to select even if you consider uh, external load if you are not able to find then you have to evaluate the support reactions this is a procedure we are going to adapt and we are going to use only two equations sigma fx is equal to 0 sigma fy equal to 0 only these two equations we are going to use in method of joints
So here, whatever may be the joint you consider, it is having at least three unknowns. So here, external load is at uh, joint D. So I will start with equilibrium of uh, joint D. So here, I am writing equilibrium of uh, joint D. So when I consider equilibrium of joint D, first I have to represent that point. This is D. And 5 kN acting vertically downwards here, which is nothing but P given here. And along this member, I am considering it as axial force S5. So along this member, S4. And along this member, S3. So here, the inclination between these two is given as 60 degrees. Here, I have to apply sigma fx is equal to 0, fy equal to 0. When I apply sigma fx is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 parameters are coming there into equation. When I apply sigma fy equal to 0, only this parameter and 5 kN force is coming there. So it is easy to evaluate S3 when I consider sigma fy equal to 0. So that's the reason I'm going to apply sigma fy equal to 0 first. When I apply sigma fy equal to 0, the vertical component of S3 is S3 sin 60 minus 5 kN is equal to 0. From that I can find the value of S3 which is nothing but 5 by sin 60. So if I simplify this one I will get S3 value which is nothing but 5.77 kN. So this is the value of S3. So let us apply sigma fx is equal to 0 for this uh, joint. When I apply like that I will get S5 minus S4 minus S3 cos 60 equal to 0. From that, S5 minus S4 is equal to, S3 is 5.77 cos 60. From that, S5 minus S4 is equal to 2.88. Consider this one as equation 1. So we will come, it, come to this one later. So when we consider equilibrium of joint D, so we will be able to evaluate 3. So around it. So now you tell me which joint is having uh, less number of unknowns. C right why because when we consider C it is having only 1 and 2 as the unknowns. So let us consider equilibrium of uh, joint C. <coughs> when I consider equilibrium of uh, joint C. So this is S1. This is S3. The angle between these two is 90 degrees. So from this figure. And there is S2 which is inclined at 30 degrees to S3. So for our convenience what I will do is I will rotate this one until S1 is horizontal. So S1 like this. Next then the angle between these two is 90 degrees right then S3 will become vertical. And uh, S2 is inclined at 30 degrees uh, with uh, S3. Now you can apply sigma fx is equal to 0, sigma fy equal to 0. When I apply sigma fx is equal to 0 minus s1 plus s2 cos 60 equal to 0. The horizontal component of s2 is s2 cos 60 or otherwise s2 sin 30. When we consider sigma fy equal to 0, s3 acting vertically downwards minus s3 minus s2 cos 30 equal to 0 or uh, sin 60 equal to 0. So whatever you can you can write and you know the value of uh, S3 right 5.77 so substitute here from this S3 is uh, minus uh, 5.77 minus S2 cos 30 equal to 0 from that S2 is equal to minus 5.77 divided by cos 30 then you can calculate it then you will get minus 6.66 kilonewtons. Substitute the value you got here in this relation. So then uh, S1 is equal to S2 cos 60 from this right. S1 is equal to S2 cos 60. Substitute the value of S2 here minus 6.66 cos 60. So if you simplify that you will get S1 is equal to minus 3.33 kilonewtons. So S1 is over. So now 1 and 2 are over. Round 1 and 2. So now, now tell me which joint is having less number of unknowns. This joint right, when you consider equilibrium of joint A, 1, 2, 
three three unknowns are there. When you consider equilibrium of joint B, one two two unknowns are only there, right? So I will consider equilibrium of a joint B now. So when I consider equilibrium of a joint B, first I have to represent the point B there, and R B acting vertically upwards. Next along member B D, so there is S five, right? So I will represent it S five, and uh, this is member two, so S two. Inclination is thirty degrees. Here I don't want to find R B. I want to find S phi only. For that reason, I will consider sigma f x is equal to zero. When I consider sigma f x is equal to zero, minus S phi minus S two cos thirty equal to zero. The horizontal component for S two is S two cos thirty, and it is along negative x direction. From that, S phi is equal to minus S two cos thirty. Substitute the value of S two here, which is nothing but minus six point double six. Then it is minus of minus. Plus six point double six into cos thirty, you will get five point double seven kilonewtons. This is S five. So you got the value of S five rounded. So now you have you have to find S four. So earlier we got one relation S five minus S four is equal to two point double eight. So substitute the value of S five in this relation, then you will get the value of S four. So we have this relation S5 minus S4 is equal to 2.8. We got S5 as 5.77. From that S4 is equal to S5 minus 2.8. From that S4 is equal to S5. We got 5.77. Substitute that 5.77 minus 2.8. That is 2.89 kilonewtons. So now we have got all the axial force in the members. S1 is over. S2 is over. S3 is over. S five is over, S four is over. So all the axial forces uh, in the members we have calculated by using method of joints. Here the thing you have to remember is you have to select a joint uh, which is having less number of unknowns, two number of unknowns. Why? Because we are having two equations. If it is not possible, select three unknowns. Okay. At that point, uh, at that joint, you should have an external force. With that force, you should be able to find at least one value. So then only select that joint, or otherwise. Evaluate the support reactions, then select the joint which is having two number of unknowns. Hope you are able to understand. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.